Okay guys, let me catch up on what's going on here. So, I opened this Joy-Con in the last video, and this is the left Joy-Con that everyone complains about all the time. And I looked at this, and the other one has uh, its separate antenna wired up to a separate board. It's a full antenna. That's probably why we have less issues with the right Joy-Con than the left one. Um, I've even tried it myself, and yes, this left one, to me anyway, has more issues. Now, looking at this right away, I think the reason that is is because, one, this antenna is built into the board like I talked about in the last video, where it goes from here up. And then at the top here, there is an actual antenna that's built into the board. And some do that, like the PS4 uh, controllers do that, where it's built into the board. The PS3 controllers did that, and that's fine. But in this case, it's sitting right next to a very large metal um, box that is behind the Joy-Con. Now, you could probably either take this metal box off, but that would take the, uh, I guess, the, the strength of this Joy-Con, whether it be that's there for just to help it. Um, or we can run the antenna the opposite way, and we may be able to solder and just move this antenna down using just a standard cable. You can use cables to extend antennas. That's perfectly fine. So my thought here is to run from here. It looks like this actually, this is the Broadcom chip down here, right? Here's the Broadcom chip. It runs a trace all the way down, hits a blob of solder, which may be where an antenna would normally come off of, or they would have those antenna plugs where you push the antenna on then runs up and it runs straight into the uh, kind of the carved out antenna in the in the PCB at the top. In fact, if it did not have this, this entire top part would not be an antenna at all. Uh, I'm not sure why they went with that. This entire top part wouldn't even be there. I'm not really sure why they did that unless it was just to save space or even possibly money because you can just etch it into the board and that's easy. I think I can take um, this blob solder here. I think I can attach a cable and just run it down and have it uh, have the antenna be kind of down at the bottom here. Um, that's kind of my plan. I don't know if it's going to work. I have no idea, but I figure while I'm in here, I might as well take a shot just to see, um, cause it's not hard to get back to this point. If it doesn't work, I can just take it right off. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's take a shot at this. Sorry guys, as much as I'd like to have shown you that, that was actually a lot harder than I, it should have been. I'm using a stupid iron that I do not like. It's cold heat iron. Anyway, what I've done is I've taken the cable, I've run it down the side there. So now hopefully our antenna should be able to draw power from this side which is not at all near the steel box and definitely not kind of cornered up there. Where we end up usually holding it anyway, down here is a place that we really don't hold it much. So again, I'm not sure if it's going to work 100%, but it was worth a shot. It was very easy to do and taking it out wouldn't be a problem at all. So I figure, you know, let's do some experimentation and see what we get. So I managed to sneak this, uh, the cable down in this corner right, uh, right down here right next to that little screw hole in the plastic down there. So it is surrounded in plastic now. No steel really is around it at all. So all I gotta do now is put this battery in and we can we can try it out. So uh, let's go let's go try this guy out now. I have to switch upstairs. I can stand away from it pretty far, hopefully, and maybe we get better signal. Um, I did a little test before, so I know how far away I can be. Uh, but yeah, let's go test it out. Hey guys, so I'm up in my living room right now and I thought I'd test these out. Remember the right one had the antenna that was already put into it. And this one was having issues as well, but the left one had no antenna. Remember, it was built into the board. Well, I soldered that antenna in, placed it down here on the bottom. So that's not really a place where you would cover up with your hand when you're playing. So I was going to do some tests with the TV uh, and the calibration settings and see if I get any extra room out of these Joy-Cons. Now, the right one should be the same. If you cover it, if you put it behind your back, things like that, it will lose connection. I don't think they're good up to really 25 feet if that, but hopefully with the new antenna this won't work better. Now I've measured out how far I am and I am as long as this tape measure is out, which is 12 feet. So I'm about 12 feet from my switch right now. Um, so it's across the room from me and I figure we'll do some calibration tests. So let me get you set up so you can see the TV. Okay, so let's start with the right Joy-Con. This is one I've really done nothing to other than take apart and put back together. Uh, works fine from 12 feet. As long as it's pointing at it, which is good. So that seems fine. Um, let's do it behind the back. Uh, eh, seems fine. Uh, a little stutter. <laughs> Nothing major. Seems fine. Put the hand over the front. And so far, everything seems good. Oh, okay. So if you pull, I know where the antenna is. It's right here. The antenna's on the side here. So if I really put pressure on that side, um, it should start to lose control as I go. So far, it seems good. Uh, lean back a little further. So my right one really never gave me a ton of issues. Some, but not a lot. I'd have to really work for it to do that. Now the left one is the one that everyone says gives you problems. 
Um, again, this is when I put the antenna in. Remember, it's running down to the bottom now instead of the front. So it's fine as well. You can see there's no issues. I was able to actually get issues out of this one before, just this behind the back. And this is actually from 12 feet, like I said, probably, yeah, probably closer to 13 with it behind my back. So yes, they both work fine from a reasonable distance. You shouldn't have any real issues on either. Um, but let's go further back and see if we can get issues out of it. So this is from about 20 feet out here. This is the uh, left one is the one I put the antenna in, the right one I didn't. Let's do the right one first. It's fine. <clears throat> okay, so behind the back right now, I'm starting to lose some. Okay, it's, it's losing it. It's not doing anything. Now, I am moving it with my hand. As I bring it to the front, it'll start moving more. And as I go to the back, it starts to kind of lose it. It's fine. Oh, there. Okay. So it starts to lose it. So the right one does have some issues. I bet you if I cover it up, it might get issue as well. Yeah. So you can you can get issue uh, out of it. Okay, there we go. It's back. But you have to you, again. You have to work for it. It's not something that just happens. This is the left one. This is the one that's supposed to give you problems with that antenna. And it seems better. Um, this is behind the back. It's working fine. If I take it to the front. Also fine front. So let's um, let's go back even further. Let me go to this door from the switch is 30 feet. So let's go back and do the, the left, the right one. Again, it's the one I haven't done anything to. Let's see, these are fine from 30 feet as long as you have a direct line of sight to it. Now, once you start covering it, it starts, like this is covering it, it's losing it. It's not even moving. And I'm, there we go. Now it's going back. It's going behind the back, it's not even working. <laughs> so if I like kind of take it to the back while doing it, it starts to really lose it. So let me use the left one. Uh, that's fine. Behind the back, this is the one I put the antenna in. It's fine. So that antenna is helping. Remember, this is the weaker one. The left one is the weaker one. Let's go back. Against the wall here is 40 feet. This is the right one. It doesn't even really work. <laughs> it might actually lose it. Let me go to the left one. This is the one with the antenna. It is working fine. I think if I go back any further, it will lose this right one. It's okay, it might lose it. Trying to come back. Back to the left one. I'm gonna try to put it behind my back. Uh, it's losing it. So it seems adding an antenna to the left one, just extending it down, again down here where your hand doesn't usually touch, is helping. Because normally it's right here on the side. You're holding it, that's going to affect it. But down here where you don't really touch is probably helping it. Again, it's also a, a big copper <laughs> antenna that I added to it, so that's helping as well. Um, is it something you should do? No, really from 12 feet it's fine. You have to really, like I said, work for it to mess it up like I did where you go. 40 feet, which my PS4 controller would have given up halfway down that hallway. So that's actually really good for Bluetooth. Bluetooth is really not rated very far in these cases. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I took it apart, put that antenna in. Um, what, should you do it? No, I wouldn't do it. It was kind of extreme case just to fix the obvious issue, which is the antenna sitting next to that metal uh, square behind the Joy-Cons joystick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you next time.